Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam Hurst, and this is the 22nd in our series of the October Gothic A Day Tempts the Vampire to Stay. As usual, I'll be introducing a text and a writer, going over some key plot points, why I think they're important, and also giving you some further reading recommendations. Now, we're rounding up our series looking at lots of different ghost stories by moving into the Edwardian period. We're going to be looking at the work of the writer M.R. James. And you may have been missing him in our study or look quickly through ghost stories because he's certainly one of the most famous ghost story writers still today and one of the most popular. Now, he's not a Victorian writer, clearly, so I am popping into the 20th century here for a minute, but it's worth noting that many of his stories have a slightly older feel. If not Victorian, then certainly a sort of conservative Edwardian feel to them. He was not a friend to the modern literatures of his time, broadly speaking. He was, in a strange echo of that first Gothic writer, a medievalist and an antiquarian himself, and of course, a scholar. And if you've read much of his work, you'll know that most of his stories have a few key ingredients. One of those ingredients is usually a scholar or antiquarian. Often the locations are within the UK or within Europe, often involving some sort of, not quest, that's not quite right, but some sort of discovery and also some sort of artefact. Now, I'm not going to just give the idea of one story today, but look at a couple, just to have a look at what kind of patterns, what kind of stories we're finding. One of his most famous and perhaps most popular is A Whistle and I'll Come to You, My Lad with a don on holiday, getting involved in an incident which leads to some terrifying nighttime consequences. What would you do if you found an ancient whistle on the beach? Possibly not blow it. It's a tale of misappropriated antiquarian artefacts. Um, it involves a sort of mythologizing of the history of England and it ends with what for me has always been comical, but for many people, is terrifying. An apparition that appears to be literally a bedsheet coming for to strangle you. Another of M.R. James' popular stories is, and this is one of my favourites, The Metze Tint, which involves, again, an academic and a collector of curious um, artistic works, particularly Metze Tints. This particular unnamed and unattributed Metze Tint is sent to him by a dealer. He notices something strange about it though, because he's sure that it didn't quite look like that the first time he looked at it. It depicts a house and it depicts a small figure. When he turns away and looks back, the figure's moved. And then again, the figure's disappeared. But wait, there's a light in the house. There's a shadow. Eventually, it turns out that the mezzo tint is telling the story of an abduction, a tale of revenge. And it's one of the creepiest stories to me that M.R. James ever wrote. The last one that I'll talk to you about very briefly is Count Magnus. Now, this involves trips overseas. Again, a lot of questing. Again, a lot of interest in history and architecture. But this one is the tale of a vampire. Now, if any of those sound interesting to you, I can definitely recommend going up and picking a, up a collection of M.R. James's work and really delving into this world that he creates, full of academics, antiquarians, mysteries, discovered objects, and truths, supernatural truths, just hidden underneath the surface of our world. Not in the sense that there are monsters hiding for us, hiding from us, but just this sense that there's there's something just beyond the realm of understanding, which is quite often waiting to get us. I hope that you enjoy your reading. Goodbye. <laughs>